Happy Tuesday, y'all. It is Chakisha Sims, owner and operator of Hair Couture Salon and Spa. And just in case you didn't know, I am located inside the Salon Plaza on West Broad Street um, in the Fountain Square Shopping Center, and I am Suite 106. Um, but I am on here today um, to kind of jump on the video bandwagon. I haven't really did, done any videos showing myself talking about hair and things of that nature. Um, I'm revamping some things and I decided to bring back Hair Tip Tuesdays. Um, I wasn't really doing it on Tuesdays. I was just kind of randomly throwing them out there doing like the winter months. It was more of a seasonal thing. Um, but I want to be able to help my clients, future clients, and just um, women and men in general just to give them some tips in regards to what to do to maintain their hair when they're not um, sitting in their stylist chair. Um, last week I did a post um, just about how to protect your hair and things of that nature. And a lot of us as stylists are doing this. This isn't anything new, but it's important to educate our clients as well as ourselves. Um, one of the tips that I'm gonna get into before I even go into the main tip that I wanna talk about is just the importance of being educated as the client and the hairstylist. Um, as the client, you come to your stylist to get your hair done. That's a given. But as stylists, it's our job to educate you on what you need to do until you come back to avoid certain things from happening. A lot of times, you may have one of those clients that come to you once or twice a year just for a relaxer. And they come back complaining about why their hair is breaking off. It's reasons behind that. Not everybody's hair um, can wait once or twice a year. Depending on your texture, you might have to stick to a consistent relaxer schedule. It is true, you can have healthy relaxed hair, regardless of what people say, but it's all in how you take care of it. Because there are a whole lot of unhealthy natural hair clients out there because they're assuming, since I'm natural, I don't have to do anything extra, um, but that's not true as well. So it's a lot of myths about being healthy, well, having natural hair is more healthier than relaxed hair. It's all in how you treat your hair, just like your body. If you're putting junk in it, your body is going to be unhealthy. I don't care how many salads you eat with that cheeseburger and extra large fry and extra large Coke, your body is still going to um, do things that aren't health healthy. You'll start having breakouts. You might start having joint problems even hair loss problems. Like a lot of people expect for us as hairstylists to explain to them why their hair is falling out, but it's more than just the products you use. It's your lifestyle. It's are you stressing? Are you on medication? What's your diet like? You know, as we get older, your hair starts to thin. Sometimes it's a uh, genetic thing where your mom, your grandma, your great grandmother, or even your father they have hair loss issues. So a lot of times we inherit those things. Just like you inherit your looks, your features, um, you, your hair is no different. Um, so hair loss is always a big topic um, when it comes to uh, clients, especially in the African-American community, which leads me to what I want to talk about. And one of my fellow stylists talked about um, hair loss by pulling your hair back. That's actually a form of alopecia. Um, a lot of people think alopecia is like a one diagnosis thing. Um, some of it can be medical. Some of it could be dealing with, um, you know, the, your blood and things of that nature. But a lot of us, especially during this time of year, um, we're getting protective hairstyles. Like I have one now. Um, I'm natural, um, but I like to wear weaves, um, but I do understand the importance of making sure when I take my weaves out, I am conditioning my hair, trimming my hair, making sure that my scalp is clean and things of that nature. So to kind of piggyback on the protective style thing, some protective styles will result in what we call tension alopecia or traction alopecia. And basically it's because we have something constantly pulling at our scalp, causing our hair to thin. 
So tension alopecia can be avoided. It's just based on the client, what you are doing to your hair during the protective styles and after. A lot of times, you know, you get comfortable with the protective styles because it makes you lazy. Hey, I don't like doing my hair either and I'm a hairstylist. So this weave is giving me life right now. But you have to still maintain your scalp as much as possible because you're gonna start having buildup from the products. If you suffer like me, I have scalp. Um, I have an underactive sebaceous gland which causes flaking and that's a whole nother thing. Like, I know I'm all over the place but I'm gonna come back around to where I need to be but when you have certain scalp disorders, us as stylists, we are supposed to help you recognize them but sometimes you do have to seek medical advice. Like, we aren't doctors. You know, we are licensed to do hair and to identify issues and refer you to who you need to see. Um, just like if you go to your regular PCP and they notice that you have something like a mole, they're gonna send you to a dermatologist who specializes in skin things. So as hairstylists, it is important, you know, that you come to us so we can give you counsel and let you know, like, ooh, this doesn't look right. You might need to see your doctor. Or if you're experiencing something because of a medication, you might want to let your doctor know, like, my hair is experiencing some additional issues. Does this medication have something to do with it? But anyway, to get back to what I was saying, when you have protective styles, of course you can't get to your scalp like you would if you didn't have any braids or weaves or ponytails or quick weaves. But um, it is important to get to it as much as possible. Like for me, I don't do a net because I like to be able to get to my scalp because I do have some scalp issues and I try to keep it as clean as possible so when it's time to take the weave out, it won't be so much buildup in my braids. And when you get the buildup in your braids, when it's time to detangle, you lose hair. Plus, you're losing the hair that will normally shed when your hair is out because your hair sheds daily. That's a natural thing. You know, so don't freak out when you see your hair coming out. But if you have globs and globs of hairs because you're not detangling properly and you have so much build up between those braids because you didn't take the time to maintenance your scalp doing those protective styles. That's one way you can have hair loss. Another thing is when you're getting these weaves, for some reason, people think that your braids need to be super tight in order to be the best weave ever or even with braids, but that is what causes the tension alopecia because it is pulling the hair from your scalp. When you ladies are saying, oh my gosh, I gotta take an Advil before I get my hair done. You shouldn't be getting your hair done if you gotta take an Advil or a leave, not unless you just naturally tender headed. But you should never be sitting in a stylist chair where they braid your hair so tight where you look like you had plastic surgery and then you get sores or your scalp feel like it's palpitating that's gonna cause tension alopecia so your hair is gonna grow but when you take that weave out it's gonna be paper thin because of the tension that's been placed on your hair when you got the install or the braids or what have you even with ponytails if you wear ponytails all the time I wear ponytails sometimes when I don't have my hair out but I don't pull them tight because the tighter you pull them, the more, when you know how we like our edges, ladies, you have to be careful with that. The other thing with protective styles is wearing them too long. Protective styles are just that, a temporary style to protect your hair, you know, during the summer months if you don't want to have a lot of heat on your hair, excuse me, um, or just to give your hair a break from the regular processing that you do on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. So it's a temporary style. So it's not meant to wear your weave for six months just because you paid three to $500 for your bundles and you paid $200 for your install. That doesn't mean that. It means that you pay for what you want, but you also want to take care of what's underneath it when you take it off. I have so many clients that come and take their weaves out and their hair is just as long as this but it looks like tissue paper because they never took care of their hair in between installs. 
So my tip is when you're doing your protective styles, because we are in that season of protective styles. When you take your weaves and your braids out, even if you're one of those people like, I just don't want to wear my hair out. I want to go back to my weave. Find something that you can do until you go back. For me, I recommend to all my clients before they go back into their weave or their braids, at least give themselves a week or two in between so their scalp can breathe, so they can get a good shampoo, a good conditioning treatment, and a trim. Ladies, don't be scared of a trim. I'm about to wrap this up because I know I'm going a little bit long, but this is very important to me because I specialize in healthy hair. And it's hard for me to make your hair or maintain your health of your hair when you're not doing your part. You know, just like when you go to your doctor and they say you got to make sure you, you die and you take your medicine, you have to do your part so when you go back to get your labs and things like that, you can get a good report. So as stylists, we need our clients as well to do their part. Um, so a trim, let's, let's, let's tackle the trim and then I'll get back to the end of this. If you are on a consistent trim schedule, which I try to place all my clients on a trim schedule, whether you're relaxed or natural, I am making sure that I am keeping your ends trim every, at least every six to eight weeks. And with the trim schedule, basically, if you are keeping yourself on a consistent trim schedule, you're getting a trim, which is maybe this much, maybe even a dusting, especially if you're not putting a lot of heat to your hair. But if you wait, a whole year before you get a trim, it's gonna end up being a cut. And for me personally, because I'm one of them people like, I don't like to get my hair trimmed. So to me, a cut is anything more than a half an inch. So to avoid having to always get your hair cut and to break this stigma that, oh, my stylist is scissor happy. It's not that they're scissor happy, it's just that you're pushing the time that you need to get your hair cut. Let's do this example real quick. So you know how when you take your sons to the barber shop, or if you got a short haircut and you keep in the back trim, you're like, oh, it's growing back so fast because you're keeping it cut or trimmed or whatever the case may be. So you'll see more growth because you're sealing your ends, helping to prevent from them splitting and becoming damaged. But when you don't do that, you end up getting more cuts than you get more trims. So it's very important. I recommend six to eight weeks. If you don't do a lot of heat, maybe eight to 12 weeks. So going back to the whole protective styles thing so I can wrap this up. So when you're taking out your weaves and your braids and things of that nature, make sure you see your stylist. So they can give you, depending on what your hair type and your hair needs are, giving you a good moisturizing, hydrating, or protein treatment. Um, getting a trim and if you're nervous about wearing your hair, because I know some of us, they like to wear weave. We want to keep the persona that these bundles are ours, which they're not. <laughs> but we want to keep a persona that we got all this hair. So maybe find like a ponytail or a bun or even buy you a wig if you are that um, concerned about maintaining an uh, image or a look in between the next time you get your protective style. So to avoid tension alopecia, Make sure you're not getting your braids put in tight or having your ponytails in too tight. And make sure that you're not keeping your weave in for or your braids in for an excessive amount of time. Because as your hair grows, that weight of the weave is pulling down on your new growth. You have this much new growth and you have this braid in double or triple wrap weave on that braid. That's putting tension as well. So I hope this has been helpful. Again, this was a little bit longer because I am passionate about trying to maintain and restore the health of my client's hair. Um, if you want to um, get more information about me, visit my website, which is www.haircouturesalon.com, and that's couture with a K. And also subscribe to my website because I send out information to my clients and potential clients via email um, and also I like to post specials and little fun things for my clients so if this has blessed you and blessed your hair life make sure you tune in for next Tuesday's hair tip until next time peace